Hello everyone. Today I thought it would be fun to share 50 Duke Nukem facts that you probably didn't know. Of course, some of these facts will be more well known than others, but I've searched the internet high and low to try and find some of the most obscure Duke Nukem facts, so there should be something new here for everyone. As a bit of extra fun, why not tally up how many of these facts that you knew and let me know in the comments. Anyway, we have a lot to get through, so let's go. Unique Music Tracks In Duke Nukem 3D, there's a unique music track for each level of the game. That's pretty impressive when you consider there are more than 40 levels. Heavy Metal The original proposed name for the franchise was Heavy Metal. The developers of course later decided to name the franchise after the main protagonist instead. Original Voice Actor The original voice of Duke wasn't John St. John, it was Joe Siegler a role he's very proud to have on his resume. The Phantom Menace. If you run the Duke Nukem Forever 2001 E3 trailer side by side with the Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace trailer, you'll see that they line up almost perfectly. Sales figures. Duke 3D was a commercial hit selling 3.5 million on PC. According to its Wikipedia entry, it was the 12th best-selling computer game in the United States during the period between 1993 to 1999. Not bad. And in regards to Duke Nukem Forever, looking at its Wikipedia entry, it sold over 376,000 physical units in its first month. Take-Two Interactive revealed that the game sales were half of their initial expectations, However, Take-Two would later say that Duke Nukem Forever would turn a profit. Source Code In 2003, 3D Realms released the source code for the game, leading to some fantastic source ports, including the great eDuke32. Tattoo Duke Nukem has a tattoo on his butt. In the level Pigsty, Duke comes across a photocopier, and what do you do when you find a photocopier? That's right, you photocopy your butt. On the scan of Duke's behind, we see a tattoo of a heart with an arrow through it, with Lani written underneath. It's assumed that this is a reference to Lani Manella, who provided the voice work for most of the female characters in the Duke Nukem games. Reception We all know Duke 3D kicked ass, but what did the critics think? Duke 3D was well received upon release. It has an 89% rating on Metacritic. If we look at some of the contemporary reviews of the game's console ports, however, we'll find that N64 Magazine gave the game an 86% rating. Sega Saturn Magazine rewarded the Sega version a whopping 97%. Unfortunately, I can't find any contemporary reviews for the PS1 version. The earliest one I can find is a GameSpot review from April 2000, giving the game a 4.8 out of 10. Ouch. Take my word for it, it kind of sucks. Censorship To meet the requirements for release, the game had to be censored in Australia. Some examples of the censorship include removed or reduced blood, missing adult-themed posters, the body parts were removed in the sushi bar and raw meat, and the babes were no longer asked Duke to kill them. Also, the Nintendo 64 version was censored everywhere. Some examples of this include steroids being renamed Vitamin X, the chapel and death row being removed, and in the level Red Light District, which was renamed Gun Crazy. The Forbidden Videos and Bookshop was changed to Simon Coe's Gun Boutique. Ports. Duke 3D was released on a number of systems, some you probably wouldn't expect, such as Gamecom and the Sega Mega Drive. Here is a full list of machines that had versions of Duke Nukem 3D. Altered Weapons The N64 version of Duke 3D made some interesting differences to some of the weapons. It changed the Ripper Cannon to submachine guns, for example. It also has some exclusive weapons, such as the Grenade Launcher. It also introduced some new ammo types like explosive shells for the shotgun and dum-dum rounds for the pistol. Development Budget Development of Duke Nukem 3D is said to have cost $300,000. 
Although it's unknown how much Duke Nukem Forever cost to make, it's said that George Broussard personally lost 20 to 30 million dollars of his own money on the project. Staff Originally there were 8 people working on the game, but towards the end of development, the number of people ended up at around 14. Dope Fish Early in Duke 3D's development, there were shark enemies. If you started the game with the dope fish command line parameter, the sharks would be replaced with dope fish. The sharks got cut from the game, and the easter egg was removed with it. Sharks would later be reintroduced into the game, but the dope fish cameo would not. However, there is still one remaining reference to dope fish in the game, hidden in the level, the abyss. Doom Clone As you may know, Back in the 90s, first-person shooters were often referred to as Doom clones. Doing a Google search with the term Best Doom Clones will usually bring you to a list with Duke 3D on top, or at the very least Duke will be mentioned. Damn, I'm good. Duke Nukem, the movie. There have been several attempts to get a movie made based on Duke Nukem over the years. The earliest talk started in the late 90s with film producer Lawrence Kasanov. I'm not saying it would have been bad, but he's most well known for his works on the Mortal Kombat movie franchise. And Food Fight. Survival of the fittest. Leonard. Interestingly, he is credited as a producer of the movie True Lies, which appears as a poster in Duke 3D's prototype. Later on in 2018, it was announced that John Cena was to play Duke Nukem, but this never came to be, of course. More recently, Legendary Entertainment announced in June of 2022 that they had acquired the rights to make a Duke Nukem film. It's said to be helmed by the guys that made Cobra Kai. Lame Duke For the one year anniversary of Duke Nukem 3D's release, 3D Realms released a very early prototype of the game online as a free download. I've made some videos on this if you're interested, so please feel free to check them out. Bruce Campbell Bruce Campbell, known for his role as Ash in the Evil Dead franchise, isn't too stoked with Duke using some of his famous lines, as we can see here in this brief interview from IGN. Intercom Secret In the level Death Row, there is an intercom, and if you interact with it you will hear some pig cops. I'm only mentioning this one as I only recently found out about it, and I'm a long time fan. Did you know about this one? Shareware The game was originally released on the now famous Apogee Shareware model, where the first episode of the game was freely distributed, but to play the rest of the game you had to pay up. Shrinkable Babes You can shrink the babes with a shrink ray. Took me a long time to notice this one. Original Enemies Originally, the enemies in Duke 3D were to be more robotic, rather than aliens. This would have been more in keeping with Duke 1 and 2. Composers The game's music was composed by Bobby Prince and Lee Jackson. Lee Jackson's credits include Shadow Warrior and Rise of the Triad. Bobby Prince also worked on Rise of the Triad, but also Wolfenstein and Doom. Staff Reunion the 20th anniversary edition brought back some of the original 3D Realms team to produce the new content. Alan Bloom and Richard Level Lord Grey as level designers, and the great Lee Jackson reprised his role as composer. Lawsuit In 2019, Bobby Prince began taking legal action against Gearbox for the unauthorized use of his music in the 20th anniversary world tour. All involved parties reached a settlement in December 2020. Comic book series. In 2011, Duke got his own comic book series by IDW. The comic is about Duke traveling back in time to help the Allies defeat the Nazis during the Second World War. Revenue. As of 2001, the franchise had generated over $1 billion in revenue. Not bad. It would be interesting to know the updated figures. Duke Nukem. The spelling of Duke Nukem was briefly changed due to a character from Captain Planet having the same name. When the guys at 3D Realms realized that the name wasn't trademarked, the name was restored. World Record 
Duke Nukem Forever went through development hell. Now, you may know this already, but did you know that it holds the Guinness World Record for the longest development for a video game? John St. John. Duke voice actor John St. John also voiced the characters Big the Cat from Sonic Adventure <laughs> and Dr. Judas Heskell from Iron Fury. Megadeth. Famous metal band Megadeth did a cover of Grab Bag, which was later revealed to be an official theme for the Scrap Duke Nukem Forever 2001 build. Spin-offs. There are around 11 spin-off Duke Nukem games. The most well-known ones are probably Zero Hour on N64, Time to Kill on PS1, and Manhattan Project on PC. Cryptic Games When 3D Realms were forced to stop development on Duke Nukem Forever in 2009, Cryptic Games were formed using key staff from 3D Realms to continue development. Saturn Version The Saturn version wasn't running in the build engine. It's a unique version of the game made by Lobotomy and was built on their own engine called Slave Driver. It's an impressive engine for its day, allowing for some cool lighting effects and fully 3D environments. 2001 build. On May 9th, 2022, an unfinished build of Duke Nukem Forever from 2001 was leaked online. It includes the full source code and a level editor. A fan project called the Duke Nukem Forever Restoration Project is working hard to make the game feel more complete. Dog. Duke almost had a dog. In Duke Nukem Forever, the developers almost implemented a dog companion for Duke. They found the AI too difficult to code, so they gave up on it. Toy Line. Duke had his own short-lived toy line by Rosaurus. The set contained four versions of Duke, an Octobrain, a Pig Cop, and a Battle Lord. Exclusive References. The N64 version also had some unique pop culture references, such as Hannibal Lecter, Snake Plissken, and Yoda. Episodes. The latest release of Duke Nukem 3D has five episodes. The first release of the game gave us the original three episodes, the Atomic Edition added another, and then the 20th anniversary brought the total to five. Pig Cops. The Pig Cop enemies are a staple of the franchise. For some reason, I always thought that they were what became of the male population of Earth, as you never get to see any in the game but the game's instruction manual says that they were created to suppress residual human opposition and to enforce the new alien power on Earth. They were said to have an extremely high intolerance for humans and that they are filled with rage when they detect human scent. I certainly wouldn't mess with one. Bombshell. The rights to the cut Duke Nukem character Bombshell were retained by 3D Realms. They ended up giving her the full name Shelley Bombshell Harrison and using her as the main protagonist in her own series of games, starting with Bombshell, then Iron Fury, and the recently announced Phantom Fury. Extended Levels The N64 port of Duke 3D has extended levels with new areas, new 3D explosions, and a completely 3D rendered world. Also, you can save the babes. Most reused level. Hollywood Holocaust is perhaps the most famous Duke level, appearing in 3D and was to be featured in the Scrap 2001 version of Forever. Also, it appears in the 2011 version as a multiplayer map. PS1 Prototype. There's a prototype at the PS1 port of Duke Nukem 3D that includes human male NPCs. They were changed to assault troopers in the final game. This is significant because it would have been a rare instance of meeting male NPCs. Plug and Pray. The PlayStation version of the game has a unique episode called Plug and Pray. The first level is inspired by Tomb Raider. The episode has since been adapted to PC by fans and modders. Atari 2600. As an April Fool's joke, Veteran 3D Realms employee Joe Siegler released a copy of Duke Nukem Forever for the Atari 2600. It was real in the sense that he had several physical copies made, but the game would only display a title screen. 
there was no game to play. Cameos Duke Nukem Cameos Duke Nukem has cameoed in several games, including Choplifter HD. He also appeared as a driver in Death Rally, and in an early scene in the movie Ready Player One. Pop culture references Not many franchises can boast as many pop culture references as Duke Nukem. Some of the more popular ones include Blow it out your ass and It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of gum quotes from They Live and Hail to the King, baby quoting Ash from Army of Darkness. Duke Nukem Vengeance the sequel to Duke Nukem Forever was to be called Duke Nukem Vengeance. Early ideas for the story include a concept where Duke was going to appear to die at the end of Forever as an act of sacrifice. In Duke Nukem Vengeance, they were thinking of having you start off playing as Bombshell until you discover Duke buried under some rubble. As a side note, perhaps I'm a bit slow here, but I didn't realise this until making this video. Duke Nukem Forever is called Forever, as it's a way of getting 4 into the title, being the fourth mainline game. Duke Nukem Vengeance would use the V from Vengeance to signify that it is Duke Nukem 5. Who could possibly beat Duke? The guys at 3D Realms gave a lot of thought to this question. One of their favourite answers was a Duke clone called Nega Duke. He would have all the same skills as Duke, but was genetically modified to be bad. He would wear an all-black outfit and have a lot of new one-liners. He was also going to be a playable character in Duke Nukem Forever's multiplayer modes. So there you have it guys, 50 things about Duke Nukem. Hopefully you learned something you didn't already know. This is a bit different from the videos that I usually make, but I thought I'd try something new, so thanks for sticking around. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Again, thanks for watching, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya! Better.